Hello everyone and welcome to the start of a brand new journey, a whole new game which I'm going to be documenting every single step of from the very beginning all the way up until release. And I am so excited. I've had this idea for this game for over two years now. I was working on Aquilinox at the time when I came up with it and development on Aquilinox wasn't going very well at that point and I very nearly, very nearly switched to this project. Um, you can see in my old notebook, I've got Aquilinox stuff, Aquilinox stuff, and then suddenly there are pictures of cities, and then I go back to Aquilinox stuff again. Luckily, I decided to stick with Aquilinox then, but now I'm very happy to finally be able to make this game. So, as you probably guessed, it is going to be a sort of town building game, and I know, I know, there are already loads of town building games, I know. I can assure you, I've really thought through this a lot this summer. I've been brainstorming loads of different game ideas, considering all sorts of different games. Um, nothing excited me anywhere near as much as this project does. I think it's going to be, first and foremost, I think it's going to be so enjoyable to develop, which obviously for me is pretty important. I think it's going to work really well with the devlog videos, which is also good. And I'm also pretty confident that it's going to be a very enjoyable and appealing and interesting game to play when it's finished. I've also been doing a lot of pre-planning for this game, which is something that I didn't do at all for Aquilinox, and um, I've learned from that mistake this time around. I mean, I've got Word documents and everything. I've really been trying to consider what my overall vision for the game is, who my target audience is, um, what's going to make the game unique, why are people going to want to play this game, and I've also put a lot of thoughts into how I'm going to structure the development of this project. And I'll be telling you all about that in this video and in the upcoming videos, but right now, I've been waiting a long time to start this project, so I'm just going to get started. I'm going to get started with some programming now, and I will tell you more about the project and show you what I'm working on in a bit. So, in case you don't know, I like to make my own game engines, and I'm going to be doing the same for this game as well. So, over the summer, I got started uh, making an engine for this game using OpenGL, and I just want to show you what I've got so far so that you can see what my starting point for this game is. So here you can see I've got some super simple 3D rendering set up which these trees are demonstrating and I've also got some very basic UI rendering as well which I'm testing with all these colourful boxes and at the moment that is it, it's the absolute basics um, obviously still loads to do but that means that in these videos you're really going to be able to see the game being built up from pretty much nothing and hopefully evolving quite quickly in the next few weeks into something a bit more interesting. So the very first thing that I'm going to be implementing into this game is the terrain, the land on which you're going to be building your towns. So I've just been planning out the implementation of that, um, working out things like how many bytes are going to represent each vertex of the terrain, and as you can see I've started implementing it and I've got a green square. Um, obviously you have to start somewhere, and with OpenGL the first step is always kind of the hardest, there's a lot of setup you have to do to get anything rendering, but now that I've got a square rendering I can start building up upon this and adding things like lighting and colours quite easily. Before I go any further I just want to talk quickly about how I'm going to structure the development of this project, because for Aquilinox I had absolutely no plan, I just had an idea for the finished version of the game and I just set off blindly towards it. This time it's going to be a little bit different, I'm going to work in small iterations, and after every iteration I want to basically have a finished, working, playable version of the game that I can then build upon in the next iteration. So. This is my Trello board for the game, and you can check this out, I've put a link to it in the description. And in this list here you can see all of the, the first planned iterations, and the first thing that I'm going to be working on, as you can see, is just setting up the absolute basic city building mechanics. And in the list to the left here I've split that up into its individual features, and then for each feature I've written down the simplest possible version of that feature, and that's what I'm going to be implementing first. You can also see that I've written down all the things that I've got plans for each feature in the future, in future iterations, and I've done this so that I keep that in mind while I'm implementing the simple version, because I want to make sure that when I implement this really simple version of the feature, that I do it in a way that's scalable, that's future-proof, in a way that can be easily built upon in the future, and not just something that's going to be redone at some point, because that would just be a waste of time. So right now, as I said, I'm working on the world generation stuff, the terrain, 
and in the list on the left here I've broken that down into the individual tasks and I'm just working my way through this list at the moment. So I've pretty much finished writing all the terrain rendering code for now and I just wanted to show you what I meant by trying to make everything scalable and trying to make it all future proof. So for now I'm just going to be using a flat terrain but obviously in the future I'm going to have more interesting world generation with forests and lakes and rivers so I needed to make sure that the terrain would be able to handle that in the future and that I wouldn't just have to rewrite the whole terrain rendering thing again. So here you can see I've been making sure that the terrain can handle different heights, it can also have different colours for different parts of the terrain, and in the future I also want to implement seasons at some point, and even though I'm not implementing seasons yet, I've made sure that the colour of the grass can be manipulated quite easily, um, just controlled by a variable in the code. So I haven't got seasons in the game yet, I haven't got these complex um, rivers and lakes yet, but when I do in the future, it's going to work nicely with the code that I've written so far. This morning I've been working on something a little bit less interesting, which is a background loading system for objects in the game. So when the game is running and it comes across something that needs to be loaded, for example, you want to load up a new world, if it does it here in the main thread, then it would cause the game to freeze because it takes a little while to load up the new game before the game can continue running. Um, so what happens with the background loading system is that when the game comes across something that needs to be loaded, it simply passes it to the resource loading thread and then continues. So the game doesn't freeze at all. And then at the same time in the background, the resource loading thread works on loading up that new world. I ended up working on the background loading stuff for quite a while because in Equinox I, I pretty much hated the way that I'd implemented it but it was always a bit too late to change it so I just kind of had to stick with it but this time I really wanted to get things right first time from the beginning and make life a bit easier for myself in the future. So the terrain is pretty much finished now, I've just been tidying up the code and as you can see it's all rendering properly, it can be generated in the background, it's future proof as I said, and I also added a few trees just because I can't be bothered to look at an empty green square for the next week, because if we have a look in Trello the next thing that I'm going to be working on now that I've finished update 0.0.1, .0 the next thing on the list is some UI work, I'm going to be implementing the main menu. Um, I always think it's good to get that done fairly early on. There are a few things that I think it's easier to implement earlier in development rather than later. For example, in Equilinox one thing that I didn't implement early enough was the ability to change the size of the display and when I finally got around to doing it, it was kind of too late because so much of the code was based around the display being a fixed size. Um, so this time around I've implemented that straight away as you can see to make sure that I don't make that same mistake again. It's probably going to take a few days to set up the UI stuff, so I think I'll save that for the next video. But before I finish this video, I just wanted to show you around my office quickly and show you some of the things that I've upgraded since my last place. So firstly, I got myself a whiteboard, which I'm going to use to plan out my week. No pens yet though, I forgot to buy pens, um, but I'll get some soon and then the planning can begin. Obviously, I also got a new desk, a little bit bigger than the one that I had in Sweden, which is nice so I can have space to put my notebook here as well. And just in general, I really like the look of it. The wood goes very well with all my plants, especially this one. This is my favourite, although I read online that it's quite easy to accidentally kill it. So we'll see how long he's here for. I also got two new monitors, matching monitors for once. For the last five years, I've had two different monitors and I've never managed to get the colours to match. So it's nice to have two the same finally. Also, obviously, I got a new chair and compared to the wooden stool that I was using in Sweden. Um, this is pretty much luxury. Got a bit of space here, I'm probably going to get a bookshelf or something, a bit of extra storage space. Then this is where I'm going to do my painting. If you've seen my previous devlog videos you might know that I started trying to learn how to paint. Not very good yet, but it's very enjoyable, so that's where I'm going to do that. Um, this is just my old computer, I need to transfer some stuff across to my new computer still. And then finally I got a keyboard. When I was younger I used to play a lot of piano and over the summer while I was back home I started playing again and I thought it would be nice to be able to keep practicing while I live here, so I got a keyboard. 
So that's my new office. I really like it. It's so nice having an extra room and not just having my desk put in the corner of the living room somewhere. So much more convenient and I'm very much looking forward to developing my new game in this nice new office. So that's pretty much going to be it for this video. Before I finish though, I just wanted to say a big congratulations to Blackthorn Prod, a fellow YouTuber slash game developer. I'm sure some of you know him. He just released his game, The Dreadful Whispers on Steam, and I've already played through the whole game. It's really good, definitely recommend it. It's a really cool, unique experience and just a beautiful work of art. So definitely check that out. I've put a link to the Steam page in the description. But yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic week and I will see you all in the next devlog video.